Well, God bless you. God bless you. And God bless you one more time. Rev Andy here. Hey, where y'all at? Y- y'all didn't come today? There you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we just thank God today for another day. I thank God for each and every one of you that are following. Oh, my goodness. He woke us up. You can't buy what we just woke up with. Amen. All the money on the planet can't buy you another moment. Yet he woke us up in our right mind. With all our Thanks. faculties in perfect health. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Go, kids. Hallelujah. Another day he's given us to do his work, his will, his way. Another day to see his mighty hand move on our behalf with miracles and power that we so much need in our lives Another day closer to our complete deliverance and healing. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And so I just want to say we've been praying together for quite a while. Prayers from all around his glorious planet, Earth. And guess what? Anna, I talked to Anna last night, and Tyler, Tyler down under, has been has been notified that we're praying for her, and she testified she feels it. Her life is changing. God is moving in her life in ways where she knows <laughs> that it's him. And so I just want to encourage you. We keep praying this prayer list, and God is moving miraculously quickly in everyone's lives. Amen, Listen. Keep that up. Let's just keep praying. Amen. If you're following on YouTube, I just want to give you a shout out and thank you for all the encouragement, your comments, your prayers. Keep us in prayer. Amen. We need prayer just like we're praying for you. We all can't have a day where we don't need God and his hand working in our lives. So let's pray together. Amen. Keep it going. And you guys got to tell me. Reach out to me. Put it in the comments. I feel the prayers and God is moving. When you give your testimonies, as Rod and I are doing, and by the way, he's going to be back today and it could get nitty gritty. I don't know what he's going to bring up about our past. We shared 34 years together. Before I went to hell, before we came into the knowledge of Christ, Amen. And after we've seen the changes in both of our lives as God has moved and uh, improved and healed us and saved us and delivered us from the lifestyles we used to live. And we've both been there together for each other 34 years. So these testimonies, they may get a little raunchy, but you can deal with it. Amen. (laughs) Hallelujah. I want to thank all of you on Facebook, my Facebook family, friends, relatives, and loved ones that are following. I thank God for each and every one of you. If you're on YouTube and you'd like personal prayer, come over to Facebook. Find me, Rev Eddie, one word. Rev Eddie, no period, no dash, no space. Rev Eddie is one word. Then Wiggins, W-I-G-G-I-N-S, Amen. On Facebook, message me. We'll exchange numbers. We can chat it out. We can cry it out. We can shout it out. We can talk it out. We can pray it out, knowing in our heart that our fabulous Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, will work it out. Amen. Hallelujah. A shout out to the Philippines. Amen. My favorite island, the island of Mindanao, where I have ministered and walked amongst the people and been blessed by the people as I'm trying to bless them. I did that with Pastor Rinaldo and his lovely wife, Pastor Nelia, and she will be coming on the radio. Joe Ryan has made a way, made a way for Pastor Nelia to have her own broadcast. 
and she'll be ministering, and you're gonna you're gonna be so blessed. You're just gonna fall in love with her. And to my knowledge, she's still looking for hollow bricks and bags of cement to finish this new church that she has uh, been led by the Lord to build. And so if you've got some hollow bricks or you know where some are, you can pick up a couple or three, four, or a dozen, whatever you can help her with, bags of cement and hollow bricks. Contact Joe Ryan at Mix FM, and he'll get them to her. Amen. And we thank God for you, Joe, and your heart for this word and broadcasting this word from Polanco and from Dipperlog City as we share the word of God and are a blessing to God's people and to his kingdom. We thank you, Joe, for making a way to get this podcast into the hearts of God's people. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Joe. Amen. And if you're in the Dipolog or Polanco area and you have a business, you have a service or a product that you need to sell and you need more customers, Right now, contact Joe Ryan over at Mix FM, and he's got openings, and he can get you on the air and uh, make a commercial and advertise your product, service, uh, or uh, business, and you can become prosperous in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank God for all of you out there, and I believe that Rod has a word for you on that beautiful island of Mindanao. What you want to say to those beautiful people that we love so much on that island, Rob? That island, Anuna de Nagawamo, Diplog City, uh-huh. Mindanao, Anuna de Nagawamo. Oh, okay. Now you did bring a napkin to wipe that up, right? I have no idea what you just said. Maybe they do, and they're clapping. Amen. (laughs) Glory to God. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Praising God. Hallelujah. So a shout-out to Charlotte and Dale down under, just ministering the Lord. And I found out yesterday they are prayer warriors. Anna hooked up with them, and they got to talk. They're on the same continent of Australia, but quite a few days away in travel. Amen. Uh, But they've connected spiritually. We are one body together, all of us, the body of Christ, and he is the head, and he wants you saved. He wants you healed. He wants you delivered. And by the power of his hand and the power that he's placed on this ministry, miracles of healing are going out every day through this podcast. Miracles of deliverance, chains falling off, yokes broken. Amen. So stay here, stay with us, pray with us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So uh, pray for uh, Charlotte and Dale as they continue their ministry. Pray for uh, Minister Deborah Atwell down in the Bahamas, who's a major, major, major part of my heart as she ministers for those lost souls that woman is on fire amen and she's been prophesying and praying through this ministry keep her up in your prayers amen and uh again pray for anna and realize she's reaching out to this prayer list she's got a copy and i'm going to update it with our new names she's hearing them and writing them down, and she may reach out to you. She reached out to Ladera, and Ladera said it was just lovely how uh, Anna prayed for her. So don't think she's a stalker. Uh -uh. (laughs) Uh-uh. She's a walker for the Lord. Amen. And she wants to walk into your situation and help you through. You have no idea what this young warrior has been through in her life, the suffering, the pain, the challenges being a follower of Christ. And she will share with you and share your burdens as she encourages and prays for you. So if she hits you up, just know you're blessed. Amen? Because she's being led by the Lord. Pray for her son, Jacob, and uh, wish her a happy birthday. Yesterday was Anna's birthday. Amen? 
and we just thank God for her. And she's such a blessing to this ministry. Pray for her son, Jacob, and pray for Maddie. Amen. Jacob's girlfriend. And we're praying that the Lord will just work everything out in all their lives. In Jesus' name, keep Nick and Patricia up in your prayers as a minister in the prisons in Texas. And people are getting saved and getting delivered behind bars. There's nowhere the power of God cannot reach. We can't get so low that God's mighty arm isn't long enough to reach us. Think about me. I was down in hell. He left me there. But he brought me out, cleaned me up, set me on fire with his Holy Spirit. And now you're witnessing the work of his hands. Amen. There's nowhere you can be where he can't find you. Amen. Uh, Pray for my mentor, Coach Gecker, and Dr. K, his wife, and all his family, relatives, and loved ones as he continues to teach. He was my teacher in high school, and now he's ministering the word. He's still my teacher. Amen? Laura Bolin, keep her up in your prayers. Donna and her two sons. My God, this woman has been through so much, and her sons have too. Keep them up in your prayers. Miracles of healing and deliverance in that family in Jesus' name. Harvey Carey and his wife Rosie. Anthony and Jamal on the ground in the streets of Atlanta, Georgia, as they minister the word of God. Help me with this, Rod. Elena Vasquez. Correct? Not Vasquez. Vasquez and her son, Nellie Vasquez. And she wants to come up and visit us up here in Rockland, California. She's all the way down in Coachella. I told her, girl, you come on. (laughs) It's good. It is is truly the work of God's hand, this church. I mean, we just, it's love like I've never seen in the body of Christ before. I am truly blessed to be the pastor of this church, and they have embraced me. I've never felt love like this my whole life. I, it's a miracle. And what he's doing in this body of Christ, miracle. Every service, amen? Glory to God. I can't wait for this Sunday, amen? And uh, Rod and his grandmother, I know Rod's in this broadca- podcast today, but you keep him up in his prayers, and he's praying for all of you and trying to be a blessing to all of you. He's pouring it out from his heart into your lives, how God has brought him through. And we got some testimonies today. Now, he's caring for his 97-year young grandma, Grandma Naomi, and she's watching every day, amen? So pray for her. Hey, Grandma Naomi, God bless you. God bless you, amen? And so... Keep uh, Grandma Naomi lifted up in your prayers, and she's praying for all of you. And keep my sisters, my real sisters, the Lord brought them into my life. These are my real sisters from my real mother, whom I've never known. And through Ancestry.com, we have been reconnected. God did that. Pray for my sisters, Karen and Jan. Amen. And Sarah, the paramedic, and Captain Haynes, keep them lifted up in your prayers. And Christina down in Mississippi, amen. Bless her heart. You heard her testimony on uh, a previous podcast, amen. And Tim, Pastor Tim, or Pastor Flatline, he's ready to come back. I'm going to touch base with him this afternoon. Uh, He wants to do another podcast. I even told him, you come on in with me and Rod, too. We'll really be a blessing to God's kingdom. Amen. Uh, Triple team, y'all. Amen. And so the Thunder Twins, God has opened the door for them to go through like never before. Amen. And keep them lifted up in your prayers. Amen. And uh, Heather and Jaden. And Haley, amen. And uh, um, uh, there's just so many uh, in this ministry. Uh, pray for Tex 
and his wife, Gail. Keep them up in your prayers. And I'm going to start remembering all these names or write them on this list. But there's a lot of us. Just pray for this ministry. Amen. And pray for Dominique. And she brought a guest and Ty. That's what I was trying to remember. Keep Ty up in your prayers. And Dominique, amen. And pray for Pastor Jody and Dorothy and their dad and Lee, her son. Uh, it's either patience is a name or patience is what they need. Amen. <laughs> so, uh, Scott and Carolyn, oh, they're the founders of this fabulous church. Amen. Because he lives. Amen. And they made all this possible. God put it on their heart and they moved. And what a beautiful family we are all together. And they got eight kids. Pray for their family. Pray for Dr. Scott's ministry, his healing ministry. I mean, he's just got a gift for healing. Amen. And now that we're pastors together in this ministry because he lives. I mean, he knows how to touch your body and what your body needs and has those natural, holistic uh, remedies. No drugs. And people are getting healed. Amen. He knows how to do it. And God speaks to him. Do this, do that. And he can hear God. And he does it. Just a miraculous healing ministry. And now combined with the anointing of God, I'm telling you, you're coming out healed. You're coming out saved. You're coming out delivered and set free. Amen. And especially their daughter, Sarah, and her daughter, Summer. Keep them lifted up in your prayers. They're coming out better than they went in. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Keep Keith and Jake Clark up in your prayers. And Cheyenne and Helena Gore. And Ladera and her family, she said, they all under attack. Everybody in that family under attack. And, and she's a warrior. Let's keep them lifted up in our prayers. And Evangelist Tammy and her ministry. And Ashley and her daughter and family. And Lucia and Sasha, they're doing better. Keep praying for them. They're doing better. They're coming out. Amen. And we just love them to death. We love all of you. Amen. And April and her children, Dominique Moore and Billy Moore, E.S. And uh, Pastor Nelia and pa uh, uh, we've got a backside. We get, i got to write a new one here. We've got uh, Tim Clayton uh, diagnosed with brain, brain cancer. Brain cancer gone in the mighty name of Jesus. Nancy Bullock diagnosed with bladder cancer. Bladder cancer gone in the name of Jesus. Stephanie Deffer, colon cancer gone <laughs> in the name of Jesus. No name. I don't care what the doctors have assigned these names to that's going on in our body. No names greater than the name of Jesus. Okay? And uh, they are healed in the mighty name of Jesus. Tyler is feeling your prayers, and God is moving in her life. Thank you, Jesus. We got that testimony last night. Keep praying for Tyler. Wangui, I know who she is now. I wasn't sure. Wangui Inn in Melbourne, Australia. Amen. And she says that's an African name. Praise God, Wangui. And now I don't have to be afraid. I can say pray for her. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Wangui. God, uh, 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 God bless all of you. Angelica Lewis, I've known her for years. She's down under. Keep her up in your prayers. Zarlia, the 18-month-old baby girl that uh, had brain surgery two days ago. They were uh, removing a tumor. Amen. Keep her up in your prayers. Amen. For a fast and speedy and miraculous recovery. This tumor never to return in Jesus' name. Amen. And pray for Jesse and Laura who are following us out on YouTube. And Laura has a daughter named Micah. Micah's going through. We're all going through, aren't we? Keep her lifted up in prayer. 
All of the names of these people we've mentioned, they're praying for you. Let's pray for each other, and uh, let's all get saved, healed, delivered, and set free, that we all may fall into the natural order of God's creation and do what we were created to do in Jesus' precious name. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. You ready for a a word, Rock? I was born ready. I just had to wait. Yes, and then I'm going to turn you loose, and you can bless God's people. Amen. Y'all out there ready for a word? All right, let's get into this word. We're going to Romans chapter 8. We've gone through this in a previous podcast, but we want to reemphasize it today because Rod and I are testifying to the goodness of God and what we've witnessed in each other's lives, the change that this Holy Spirit dwelling in us has done. We're going to give our testimonies, and we need you to give your testimony. But watch this. In the previous podcast, Living in the Spirit, 20 episodes we've gone through. And we probably got another 20 we'll get to when we uh, wear Rod out. Amen. But watch this. We become one with this word. We become one with this Holy Spirit. And he dwells in us. We're right back there. And you guys might be thinking, God would never want to live in me. But watch what Romans 8 has to say. Now, we're going to Romans chapter 8. I'm starting in verse 1, and I'm reading out of the New Living Translation for your ease. Amen? So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. There's nothing to judge us for. This goes back to the cross and the work that Jesus did on that cross. By putting our faith in Jesus, our sins are gone, washed in the blood. We're clean, made holy, blameless, and stand before God in God's presence without a single fault. That's how he sees us. See yourself that way. So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And because you belong to him, the power, oh, y'all act like I didn't say power. Let's say it one more time. The power, come on, say it with me all at one time. The power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. That's the work of sanctification I've been telling you about. It's by his power that he will give us the power to kill this flesh. He'll crucify this flesh. The devil's attacking our flesh. Come on, let's do this. Let's do that. If the flesh is dead, he's got nothing to attach to. Dead flesh is not going to succumb to sin. Amen? And that's what the Lord is uh, doing through his spirit cleaning this up, killing this sinful nature, crucifying it, so that we can walk in this freedom, free from sin's grip. I'm not going to do that anymore. I used to do that, but I'm free from that. So now this tantalizing Satan that you're trying to get me to indulge in, there ain't nothing here that wants that. (laughs) I'm living in the spirit, not in the flesh. My flesh done died. Holy Spirit crucified it, nailed it to Jesus' cross. Amen? That's the freedom where he wants his children to be. Let's keep reading. This is about to get good. The law of Moses was unable to save us. See, the law can't save. It can only condemn. There's no condemnation in Christ. Hallelujah. Watch this. The law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did what the law could not do. He sent his own son in a body like the bodies we sinners have. And in that body, God declared an end to sin's control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sins. He did this so that the just requirement of the law would 
be fully satisfied for us who no longer follow our sinful nature, but instead follow the Spirit. What have I said? Read your word. Read your word. Read your word. Become one with this word. Become one with the Holy Spirit. Live in the Spirit of God, and you will not succumb to the desires of the flesh. You remember that from Galatians 5 and 16. Amen. Watch this, verse 5. Those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things. But those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the Spirit. What do we always say, Rod, about the mind? The mind is the arena where great faith must dominate. Must dominate. Ain't that it, Rod? That's what it is. Tell them one more time, because I don't think they heard me. The mind is a great arena where great faith, the mind is the arena where great faith must dominate. Yeah. So what are you thinking out there? What are you thinking about? If you're yeah, thinking your about mindset? sin, you shouldn't be. What's your mindset? What's yeah. your mindset? Well, if you're thinking about Jesus, and if thoughts, if our thoughts are, if you are preoccupied by our thoughts, Lord, meaning you, you are the center of our attention. We don't have time for all that other stuff. The other stuff right. is nonsense. Right. Fill your mind with this word. Fill your mind with some of that gospel songs I'll be posting. In there. You probably got your own library. Amen. Keep your minds on Jesus and the goodness of God, not on the things of this world and these sinful desires and this sinful nature and selfish nature. That gets you in hell. And as you know my testimony, we don't have to do that. What he did on the cross and what we're hearing here in this scripture, we're freed in him. We don't have to worry about that. We don't have to worry about going to hell. We're going to live in the spirit, not in the flesh, and not of the things of this world. Amen? Verse 6. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. But letting the Spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. For the sinful nature is always hostile to God. It never did obey God's laws, and it never will. That's why those who are still under the control of their sinful nature can never please God. But if you are, but you are not controlled by your sinful nature, you are controlled by the Spirit if you have the Spirit of God living in you. And remember that those who do not have the Spirit of Christ living in them do not belong to him at all. And we've run into that, haven't we? Church folks. Yeah. Oh, they there every Sunday causing a mess. Messy folks. Pastor Hubbard used to say, I can't stand no messy folks. And I don't want no messy folks in God's church because there ain't going to be no mess getting into heaven. But they're all messy folks, and they're in our lives, and they're coming against this walk that we're walking. They're coming against this word that we're living. They're coming against our faith. And they can be family members real close to you. Amen? Just messy. Ain't nothing worse than some mess. Amen? <laughs> and, and as you know, we don't like to step in no mess and get it on our little flip-flop sandals, church shoes, tennis shoes, none of that. It's just a mess. Amen? Verse Amen. 10. And Christ lives within you. You didn't believe me, huh? That we could become one with him and he would dwell in us. I'm bringing you the scriptures. It's not me telling you something that's not true. It's God's word that I'm sharing with you. It's true. He wants to live in you. And you're thinking, I'm too dirty. I'm too much of a mess. I'm still doing this. So what? Let him in. He'll fix it. <laughs> and that's that song me and Rod be dancing to. He'll fix it. Okay? And Christ lives within you. So even though your body will die because of sin, the Spirit gives you life because you have been made right with God. Trust me, we're getting new glorified bodies. 
beautiful bodies. I want that one laying over there in the corner up there in heaven with all the muscles, the muscles, the eight pack ripped. The washboard, tell me, yeah, give me, if I got to have a body forever, give me that one. <laughs> Amen. Verse 11, the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. I keep telling you, you can become one with him. And just as God raised Jesus Christ from the dead, it says Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by this same Spirit living within you get that in your spirit that same spirit that same power that raised jesus from the dead is available in our lives healing that ain't nothing but a thing deliverance that ain't nothing but a thing for the holy spirit it's his will that we be healed it's his will that we be saved it's his will that we be delivered and set free it doesn't matter what you're addicted to the struggles that that life Huh? You got the power. That same power that raised Jesus from the dead is that same power that will deliver you and set you free from anything that's unsightly to God. Amen? Watch this now. Verse 12. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. For if you live by what it dictates, you will die. I think that's from Star Wars. You will die. But if through the power of the Spirit you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, you will live. Hallelujah. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. Now we've talked about the suffering. Let's do this last paragraph. Verse 15. So we're God's children. He's looking after us like a loving father. He's got this. Now it might be take a faith walk from you, just like I went through, packing up that U-Haul and not knowing what I'm in for, what's awaiting me. I trusted God. I trusted God. And this is sweeter than anything I could have ever imagined. And the birth of his church, because he lives with a church family that is off the chain in love. Yeah, the, you've been waiting for this a long time. The meet and greet <laughs> lasted eight hours. Nobody wanted to go home. Nobody wanted to get out of each other's arms. Even Drina commented on last week's service. Amen. Uh, the first service was like eight to ten hours. Church is over, but we're eating twice. That was Resurrection Sunday, our first service. The next one, Jean, Drina's at, she said, it takes years for a church to bond like this. God had it orchestrated where he set this up. This is his church. We walked into it. I walked into it as a pastor not knowing what to expect from God's people to be embraced and loved on like I've never, ever felt or witnessed or experienced from any church before. This is real. You could tell when love is real. People will say they love you, and you're like, really? Shouldn't I be the first to know? You say you love me, but I don't feel it. If you say you love me, shouldn't I be the first to know that, yeah, baby, I know I know you love me because it's real. You can feel it. When love is real, you can feel it. I've never felt anything like this, and I just love this church, and I am pouring everything I am into their lives. All my love that I never got to share as a child. Remember from the book, all I wanted to do was love and be loved. I didn't have nobody to love, and they sure didn't have no love for me. I got it now. God did that. God set that up. Oh, y'all just act, y'all act like some. Are you all out there? Good. Let's keep going in this last verse. So you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you received God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. Now we call him 
Abba, Father. Adopted. It, adopted. He took us adopted. in. They didn't want us. They cruelly abused us. They tossed us aside like garbage, threw me into institutions that would kill me. What did they do to you? The horrors. You know what this scripture is saying. They didn't want us. And he said, child, I do. You, you were mine from the beginning. Come on. Come on home. Amen. Watch that's this. Why. Yeah. Isn't that powerful? That's why they, that's why they didn't want us. Because we were yours from the beginning, Lord. Amen. Verse 16. We're wrapping it up. For his spirit joins with our spirit. The oneness I've been telling you about. To affirm that we are God's children. And since we are his children, we are heirs. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. You got that glory, y'all. Yeah. Just come on in. Invite him in. Ask him. Yeah. Fill me with your Holy Spirit from the top of my yeah. head to the soles of my feet. I want this. Yeah. I want this oneness. I want you to live in me. I want you to take over my life, make every crooked way straight. Straight. I'm tired of fighting. <laughs> I surrender, Lord. Come on. Do what you're going to do. I trust you. Watch this. Last sentence. But if we are to share in his glory, we must also share in his suffering. And I've told you, to walk this walk, you will suffer. Look what they did to Jesus. Look at the suffering he did on that cross. That we would be healed, that we would be delivered, that we would be healed, that we would be saved. He did it all on that cross. Amen? Look at the suffering of the disciples as they went out and ministered the word. And every Christian after that, the world rejects the truth. They want to feed you a lie. They're doing it today. And they will use any avenue available to spread their lies to go against this truth. They want you to believe the lie, and they tell you the truth is a lie. So we hang on to this, and we suffer because of it. But like I've said, we can suffer a little while here on earth and look back 10 zillion years from now at this little space that was in our life that we spent on earth and suffered and say, boy, it was worth it. Or you can suffer in this world because this world run by Satan and his demons, and all this evil and brokenness. brokenness. Oh, you're going to suffer whether you accept Jesus or not, because that's what this world offers, is suffering. Haven't we all been suffering? Even before Christ. So you can suffer a little while, and then spend eternity with Christ in eternal peace and love, or you can suffer a little while here on earth and continue that suffering like you can't even imagine in hell for forever. And who wants to do that? Make that decision today. Choose Jesus. He is the truth, the life, and the way. Hallelujah. Come on, Rock. <coughs> Take the floor, yeah. Rock. Let's hey. testify. Amen. Yep. Can well, we go yeah, to the I cliff? Think, I think you was yeah. on a high mountain, uh, way uh, up above the clouds, way up above and there the was clouds. a cliff. You won't go there. Yeah, but I think you need to turn the page to uh, Romans eight and twenty six. Okay, go from twenty six to twenty eight. Romans twenty six, out of the New Living Translation, reads. No, Romans 8, 26. Yeah, 8 and 26. I'm right there. I'm yeah, right there. Brother. You going to turn me loose? Go ahead. I'm going to run oh, with you're... this. And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Just come. You don't have to clean up, then come. Come when I get off this heroin. Come when I get off these pills. Come when I stop with this uh, lifestyle that's displeasing to him. No, come as you are. Come just as filthy and nasty as you can be. I was. And he cleaned me up. It's a yeah, process. It and it hurt. Yeah, it as he pruned up. I mean, that's like the prodigal son coming on yeah, to he, the father. 
He father smelled like pig a, poop. <laughs> yeah, go take a bath before I handle you. His father went and grabbed him. And that's the story that you told, Jesus. That's right. Come as you are. Like all good fishermen, he'll catch you first and clean you later. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. come. Amen. And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings. When you're speaking in tongues, you don't even know what you're saying. Holy Spirit takes those groanings, those moanings, and he takes them up to the throne of God and whispers in God's ears the perfect prayer. You don't even know what you're praying for. You just know that you God woke you up at 2.30 in the morning and they had this person in front of you and it's too early in the morning to call them and wake them up and see what they're going through. So you just pray. You don't even know what you're praying for, but God does. Give it to his spirit and he'll perfect that prayer. Amen? Just like he perfects our walk. Okay? Everything's perfect in God's sight. Watch this. But the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads for us to believe is in harmony with God's own will. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. Right. Amen? Yeah, that's 8 and 28. And that's good. Yeah. Now. Yeah. On that note. Come on. It was the 4th of July, 2013. So this is going to be 10 years on this 4th of July. Wow. 10 years ago. I, I was with Rod 10 years ago. He was with me. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, you are. Ten years ago, this 4th of July, I used to sleep in the back of my truck on a ridge that overlooked the city of Los Angeles. Mm. But, this, but this particular night, I couldn't get to my spot. Let me clarify something for those that don't know. I was attending classes at California State University, Northridge. Yes, you were. Journalism you were studying, correct? Getting your degree. Journalism, I was studying Yoda. That is correct. Amen. And uh, I didn't have living, living accommodations, and I didn't have the funding for living accommodations. So I had to make do. Yeah. The Lord said, wherever you go, that's where I'll be. So he I sacrificed. He lived in Apple Valley. He came to the valley where Cal State Northridge was. I'm adding to yours. Carolyn does that to me when I'm testifying in church. She knows the story. But he sacrificed having a place to live to get his education. He had to be close to campus. It was like 110 miles from campus where he had a roof over his head. And he made it up in his mind, I'm going to be the best I can be. I'm getting this degree no matter what the sacrifice. Amen. He a soldier. Come on. I'm gonna give. I'm sorry. Give it back. I'll give it back to you. You, ain't in the way. you are not in the way. You're actually saving my voice. Praise God. <laughs> so, this particular night was Fourth of July. Fireworks were still going off over the city, and you could see them quite well from that vantage point. I know that here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, however, when I went to park. <clears throat> And back into my space so that I could go to sleep and enjoy the fireworks. Some onlookers were parked there, and I had to go another route to get where I was going. Yeah. Well, unbeknownst to me, this other route had a sharp left turn. Oh. <clears throat> and this is at night. That is at night. And there's no lights up <laughs> on that that hilltop. None. Darkness. Mm-hmm. So I missed just the radius, the turning radius, and went over a cliff. Over a cliff. Listen. Over a cliff. His vehicle front. is going over the cliff. That went over and stopped. Just the front wheels. Stopped. Mm -hmm. And I asked you, Lord, well, what do I do now? <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, go get help. So 
after trying to back the truck out, which was to no avail because the rear wheels, the rear end was three feet off the ground. Whoa. Whoa. I asked the dumb question. Well, no question is dumb. The dumbest question you'll ever ask is the one you don't ask. That's a dumb question. Right. So I asked, well, what do you want me to do now? What do I do now? Go get help. So I went down to where the onlookers were, and it just so happened that the person who had me blocked out ended up being the person who was helping me. Praise God. He had a big van. He said, I got a van, but I don't have a rope. I said, I got a rope. It's no problem. Yeah. We hooked the rope up to the back of the truck and to the van, and as he's pulling the truck out of the, the rut, and the rear end of the truck is gone from three feet to three inches off the ground. The rope snapped. Oh. Yeah. Oh. I grabbed hold of, you know, my natural reaction was grab hold of the truck because I'm about to lose everything. Right. Or so I thought. But the truck was about mm, 2,000 pounds maybe. Yeah. I'm not sure. All I knew was I was not strong enough to stop the gravity from pulling that truck yeah. back up onto the road. Oh, my so God. The truck, is, the truck is pulling me over with it. And mm. a split second into that being drugged down the hill, a calm came over my spirit, and Jesus said to me spiritually, let go of the truck and trust me. Oh, wow. And, now, that's your then, life in that truck. That's your place to live. It's your transportation to school. All your possessions are in that truck. Yeah, a lot of my possessions. Uh, some of them I had in stores, but what I thought I needed, what I thought I couldn't live without, was in that truck. Mm -hmm. And the truck is now tumbling over down the hill into darkness. But with that split second and that, and that uh, declaration, trust me. Yeah. I didn't, have time. I didn't have time. There was no time for but Lord and no time for conversation. Yeah. You either want to let go. Right. Let go. Understanding track record in my life, Lord, and how you delivered through and through and through and through, time and time again, years over years, let go of the truck. Let, let it go. Let it go. We have go. such struggle in <laughs> life sometimes letting Anything it go. Let it go. So that God can move in our lives. We think what right. we're holding on to is worth it. Is worth it, but the very thing we're hanging on to is meant for our destruction. If he'd have held on, he'd have gone down with the truck the thing, over the cliff. And the metaphor and the metaphor for that is the very thing we're holding on to is the very thing that's dragging us down. Right. Right. That's the meta that's the metaphor here. Because the truck yeah. was going downhill, and <laughs> I was holding on the truck, and the truck was dragging me down with it. Ah. <laughs> oh, thank God you let go. And didn't you, uh, hadn't you just put like $2,500 into that truck trying to, yeah. uh, you, you had repaired the engine or something, right? Had the, engine, had, had the engine rebuilt with the last bit of my financial aid. Yeah. There was no more money for school, and this had to work. But no, that was my plan. Right. It had to work. God's plan was trust me. Trust me. Lean not to your own mm. understanding. Proverbs 3 and 5 says, Love the Lord with all your heart and soul and lean not to your own understandings. And look what happened. This is where the rubber the, met the road in road your life with up. the Lord. But the rubber wasn't on the road. It was going over a cliff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Quite, yeah. This is, actually where, this is actually where the rubber left the road. Yeah, the rubber left the road. Hey, Amen. Wow. The left the road. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. See, that's powerful. And there's yeah. a powerful message in that. I well, didn't want to let go of cocaine. Yet, hey. it was hey. my destruction. And I had to let go to see the power of God of deliverance in my life that I could walk away. I didn't know how to live. If I woke up and didn't have any drugs, I was shaking physically. I mean, really, my hands were shaking, and I didn't feel good. Not in my stomach, not in my innards. I just felt sick when no. I'd wake up until I yeah. got that next line or hit or crumb yeah. or something. Yeah. That's because you had a chemical imbalance. 
Yeah. But yeah. The chemical imbalance. The chemical imbalance was overcome by a spiritual infusion. Right. What did the they say spirit. about a rough night of alcohol, a north night of drinking? You need a bite of that same snake that bit you last night. You need a sip because you wake up with that hangover and you're wrecked and you're sick and you're feeling terrible. One little shot will bring you back. You know what yeah, I mean? But it doesn't. But it doesn't. It doesn't. And it's it doesn't. meant for your destruction. Some of the and lifestyles. You and you notice, you notice that's what's in... The emblem that represents doctors is two snakes. Two snakes. Two snakes across in wings. Yeah. That's 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 an emblem for doctors. And don't they have a hypocritic oath under that symbol that they are yeah, but they, promising yeah, yeah, but, to make sure yeah. that people live? Now, see, we're gonna yeah. get Ladera fired up. Now, we talking about yeah, something but, she know. Okay, yeah, she has but, something but, to but do you with. Know, but you, yeah, but you know the love of money compromises all of that, doesn't it? We gonna yeah, sell the these drugs even though we know that people are no. being hurt by them because we're getting yeah. paid by the pharmaceutical companies to yeah, put this poison lie. into God's yeah. people, and it's God's yeah. people that are separating. Yet they swore to maintain life, to do no harm. Yeah. But that hypocritical oath don't pay back your student loans. But did the snake lie in the garden? It did, indeed. So the snake lied on the pole. Yeah, <laughs> it did. That but snake still lying. Snake, but in order for the snake to lie, you got to have somebody there to believe it. Right. That's why I love Dr. Scott. You know what I'm yeah. saying? When he Audio. ministers... I'm telling you, he fell into assistant pastor so easy because he's been ministering to God's people, getting them well for 40 years. It's in so him already, doing, that pastoral love, doing, that he, care. He's been, doing, he's been doing God's work. He's been God's plan was being fulfilled in him. He didn't even know it. Right, right. But and the Lord spoke look. to me and said, he don't need a lot of training. He's there. He might need help with the scripture here and there, but I got him trained right where he needs but to be. You know what? <laughs> but you know what? When when we say, oh, Lord, I'm not ready. And he says, yes, you are, because my grace is sufficient. Yeah. 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 I've seen a grace. lot of pastors hold back the kids who are on fire for the Lord, ready to go in their ministry, and they tell them, you ain't ready. You ain't That's ready. That's because they're insecure. Who is they're ready? Jealous and insecure. They're jealous and insecure that they're going to miss out on something that's intended for them. But it's not intended right. for them. It's intended for Jesus. I turn them loose. They tell me they got a calling. Well, good. You're in the pulpit next week. But, whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait. I don't know if I'm. Yes, you are. Get up in there. I'm going to push yeah. you into that calling. So, you and you don't have to what if I make a mistake? It'll make you better. There is no mistake. Right. There is no mistake. There what if I no error? Mistake. I say the wrong thing. You'll get you'll get trained better. It's your mistakes that bring the, about the perfect. If I'm afraid of you making mistakes, we're all mistake not going to move. The, mis <laughs> the mistake. The mistake is believing that fear. Right. Exactly. Because we we were not created from the spirit of fear. As Second Timothy chapter one verse seven uh, illustrates and instructs us, we Watch were not this, created Rob. from the spirit of fear. I had to do a change of address and uh, couldn't do it online. I mean, it just uh, kept looping and freezing. Right? I get. Yes. I saw where uh, going to the conference. I found the post office. I said, "Oh, it's just down the street from the clinic. I know where it's at." Right. So I'm not going right. to use the GPS in my search the other day. Three times I attempted to get to this post office and couldn't find it. Had to do the GPS to get it, okay? But see, it's through those mistakes. Now I know where it is. Now I can perfectly drive to that post office from either the clinic or my house. And I know exactly where it's at. So it's through your mistakes that you become better, that you become good. As a pastor, 
and I'm training folks that have a calling to pastor, I ain't worried about their mistakes. That's between them yeah. and God. You just get up yeah. in there, use what you got now. The Holy Spirit is going to perfect you, and he's going right. to shape and mold and use you. But you right. get into but, that calling without fear and trick. just go, you know. And Pastor Scott, trick. it was his first time in the pulpit. I'm taking pictures of him. I got to post these pictures for y'all. He looks so beautiful, so ready, so there. But he said he had to go over his, what he was bringing three times to where he felt good about it. But when he brought it, it was like he was born in that pulpit. It was so sweet to watch. Yeah, but God used him. Is, the trick is not to be afraid to make mistakes. Mm -mm. And be, be humble enough to admit that you've made them. Yeah, there it is. And now that you know what not to do, it's going to be better next time and better next time. And pretty soon the Lord has perfected it in you. And now you can run with confidence that God is going to back up every one of your words as you're preaching with all the power of heaven. Because the Bible says you preach this gospel and signs and wonders and miracles will follow you. It makes you wonder what the other guys are preaching. Where's the signs? Where's the miracles? Where's the wonders? Where's the healing? Where's the deliverance? Where's well, the power you know what, of God? But if you're looking for all of that, if you're looking for all of that, you're missing the point. <laughs> the point is not to go in search of because revelations will reveal itself to you. Yeah, but people are getting lost back with that rod. They're sitting in churches for years where there is no power and they're sick and they're dying. And that's not the place where God wants his people. If he called you to preach, he's going to anoint you with his anointing, with all the power of heaven, to lay hands on the sick and they're healed, to cast out demons and they're delivered and set free. That power, that power is what God's people need to be seeking when they're looking and searching for a church. If you don't feel God's presence there, what are you doing there? <laughs> the Spirit of God ain't there because a lot of churches don't believe in the Spirit. Okay, well, how are you going to get through this struggle on your own strength? You need God's power. You need His strength. Amen? We got an enemy that's vicious. He hates God, and we are the apple of God's eye. And He's after us. Amen? So, hey, we're out of time. I just looked at the timer. Let us pray. Thank you, Rod. That's powerful. And we yeah. call that the Cliff testimony. And he'll be back tomorrow. He promised yeah. he'll just stay with this and keep testifying. And uh, we pray it was a blessing to you. But Heavenly Father, we just ask right now that you would bless each and every one of these. You drew here to this podcast, Lord. And I just pray that by your power and by the authority and power and anointing that you place upon my life and upon this ministry, that this anointing would go forth right now and save and heal and deliver completely all your people. Yoked, gone. Stronghold, gone. Chains, falling off, gone. Prison doors open and the prisoners set free. Those sitting in the dark, the light of God come into your life and walk you out of that dark place. In Jesus' precious and mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And I just need all of you out there to do. Can you do Rev a favor? I want you to go forth for the rest of your day or night, wherever you are. And I pray that your day be glorious and wonderful and spirit-filled and power-filled in the name of Jesus, unless you've already made other plans.